and I think you can stay on because we are now opening the session for the question and answer time. The floor is open. You can type your questions in the chat box, or you can simply unmute yourself, um, and you can you can ask your question just in case there's someone. You can raise your hand or something, and let me know. I'll unmute you or ask, I'll call you up for a question. In case there's none right now, I think I'll go for the first. Uh, the first one I'm going to I'm I'm going to get go, get in with Jenk. I'm going to request Jenk to please unmute himself, come forward because there's a small question that I need to ask, and that is about uh, the trolls. You know the, the the guys who troll you, and whenever there's um well, you know there are many non-serious participants also on the net. So what what you said was activism, etc. But very often you find that the storm is created by people who are over there just for fun and they they're not really very serious about the topic that we're talking about. Can you throw some light on that? Uh, I feel like I'm actually in quite a fortunate position nowadays because I've been very kind of fortunate both between I've got quite a large amount of Instagram following as well. I'm very fortunate because People have kind of learned that if you, if you really don't appreciate your content, then there's not really any point in following it. So I very rarely, in fact, really never have had random people who troll me or like, who are kind of like haters almost. But uh, the only time I've ever really had it, and I've never had it properly, but it's kind of my mates and I kind of like taking the mick a bit because of what, like my Instagram kind of grew quite a lot. So uh, like my mates and I take the piss out by having a famous friend almost, but that's kind of like as far as trolling ever really got. I've been quite fortunate about that. Um, it's quite good because social change is one of those things where everyone is kind of, there's no one who's really against social change in the same way that in some, some people may just have different opinions. Everyone is kind of on the same kind of one to 10 spectrum. Some people are at 10, like they live their whole lives focusing on social change. And some people are one like, they kind of, they want it, but they're not really that bothered by it. But there's no one, everyone is kind of facing the same direction. Everyone wants to have the same thing happen. So as that's kind of the case. And there's very, actually hasn't been much trolling, but the advice I would give for other people is that if you are getting trolled, uh, I feel like you should really, you should really, if you're, if you don't let it get to you, because if you really find the passion in what you're doing and you really kind of care and believe deeply that what you're doing is the right thing, then the kind of they, the other people's opinions don't really matter and they shouldn't really ever bother you because if you passionately believe that in your heart you know you're doing the right thing then it kind of it's irrelevant what other people think that's wonderful thank you if there's anyone else please i'll request you yeah if there's a question definitely uh yeah i good evening everyone yeah. uh, my question is to uh is she there Yes, she's there. Yeah. I uh, just wanted to ask, you were saying you were from Punjab and that you, uh, there was a time when you felt uh, you reached out to people in and around you. Now, my question is, uh, what exactly happened or what did you feel within that, uh, you know, that urge or there was some sort of a feeling which actually made you think about them and move ahead? What did you think you would get? Or uh, what do you think you would give them in order to get the best results? What was that first thought that came to you that I should reach out? I think that I've always had this thing with exposure. When you are, you know, you're building something, when you are, uh, you know, about to do something or you want to think out of the box or, you know, you just want to be different from the crowd, you kind of have this thing where you want to get exposure. And I, I kind of experienced that when I was um, when I was writing and when the whole publishing thing um, came out. So when I saw people like me who were not getting any exposure in uh, you know into the world or you know what's happening in the world, um, then I kind of felt like that there should be some medium or there should be at least someone there should be some organization which should you know teach them about such kind of stuff and and expose them with various things so that they can present both the notions more um you know properly and uh, can make a best use of it so yeah and uh, did you face a lot of hindrances or uh did this move through? well there were people who constantly supported me in all walks of life for example my parents um 
So no doubt I did face some hindrances because you know when you are walking out of that particular line people are going to say that you are not supposed to do that you know there are certain rules that society has set up set out for you especially in a state like Punjab in especially in rural Punjab where I have been grown up and stuff so yeah there had been hindrances but it's always important to overcome them in order to achieve what you want to achieve so yeah thank you so much wonderful wonderful thank you i do have another question for uh james but i'll, I'll ask later no 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 please me my please go ahead yes i wanted to ask harsimran also the similar question but uh in view that i assume you did your central book you passed on the 10th and the 12th from the same school since you mentioned uh-huh. yes. so mm-hmm. how did you tackle the issue about facing the board and you know those marks which are the typical concerns of schools and parents of course now that you said that the parents supported you but how did you tackle that concern and how did you face that challenge I think that as I um even talked um uh, in my speech that you know there is no exposure to vocational learning practices like literature and and um you know uh, especially English in general like it's treated as more more like a subject rather than a language and I think that this was something that I really wanted to change and and yeah um if talking about my parents they have always supported me in all the walks of life as i stated before and whatever concerns they had i stated them using um you know doing all the stuff uh, for the betterment of my community because i've always been a person from coming from a tight knit community so yeah So again for her Simran I think we are firing on you because I'm going to get back my next question will go will go to Jank but this question is for uh, to you number one I want to know what are the skills that you acquire by um, by engaging with liter- with literature and the second thing is your favorite authors and why well um the skills that I acquire from literature and reading that is such a ubiquitous question because when it comes to literature um you know such questions they are definitely prevalent in anyone's minds um so i would say that literature has really mounted and inscribed my ways of uh you know experiencing and realizing about things and even reaching the things on a different perspective because you know when you are really into reading when you're really into that process of learning then there is no turning back you are not going to come back and be like no i i just don't want to read this book or i you know i don't want to continue uh doing literature or education or anything like that so literature is something that really hoped to bring forth my notions about things and it had made me more confident about stuff and even publishing uh my own books at such a tender age has made me realize the importance of the resources that we have at hand and how to make the best use of these opportunities so the fundamental um aspects of uh this whole thing it came from literature only and um the second question that you asked who are my favorite authors and why i'd say that um i basically like contemporary authors and sally rooney is one of my favorite authors who i really inspire arun thati roy who is a very famous indian writer of course we all know her she is also one of my favorites and with her um jhumpa lahiri is also one of my favorite authors so yeah yeah that's wonderful thank you so much i think what's i want to ask you or another question please please go ahead Hi Simran, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh I'm really really thankful to you because you brought in a very important topic which has been overlooked by educators everyone mm-hmm. everywhere. The languages have become communication languages like you know English mm-hmm. communication uh, subject. And the syllabus also was reduced to the correct a few years back to make it only uh, you know to allow the children to know that subject only mm-hmm. as a means of communication 
Yeah. Which is so so wrong, technically, basically, in every way. It was the biggest mistake committed, without consulting the educators about it. Yeah. So you bringing it into focus, it's so refreshing because I've not seen even the senior educators talking about this at the level that you are talking. It has more power to you. Please uh, continue speaking about it. I know when we were growing up. I mean. Uh, 35 years back I was in school <laughs> so and incidently from Agra so St George's higher secondary school Agra <laughs> I did my first wow. <laughs> hi <laughs> brought in uh, refreshing memories so to continue from there beta I know I remember class 5 onwards Shakespeare was introduced one play at a time yeah, similarly in Hindi also you know the languages were taught properly And, and we did so many different activities also along with the academics. What we are doing today is not new. Every I remember in school, every I mean uh, every alternate days we had three houses. It was compulsory to go for sports in the evening. Uh, it, attendance was taken separately, so everything was balanced. I don't know why, in the name of progress, and in the main name of making everything convenient, we lost that. We, I mean, changes should not come only for the sake of change. They should, they should grow on the good practices. Changes should keep coming with the changing times, but not remove the base completely. They totally remove the base. So I, I really, really would like to give you more power because you know, Thank like you. you said, when anyone asks you what skills literature gives, whether it is Hindi, English, Sanskrit, anything. It is a little bit of you know a question which does not have one answer because literature gives you arms you with so many soft skills, so many soft skills, and they are inculcated without even being realized. The elocution, the fluency, the critical thinking. When you are reading, you are imagining. You you are thinking at a different level. Everyone is perceiving everything at a different level. even analytical yes so all these things that we are talking about we did not use these terms when we were growing up but all that was happening without uh, you know enforcing these words and now these words are being enforced but mm, not much is happening absolutely i believe this quickly second that we are going to bring in a little bit of change which is required because nep does speak about uh, Uh, the right things, and it will take time for it to be implemented. But I'm really, really happy, uh, and so proud to see all of you talking about certain things yeah. that even grown-ups have forgotten. Yes, yeah. that's so true. Very, so, very, so true. very true. Very true. Very true. Very true. My question to uh, our Jenk is: Can I ask Jenk you? Uh, Jenk, are you ready? So I just want to ask you when we are when we talk about blogging or when this content that you want to put out on the net, are there some things that you need to be careful about, or is, is there some pattern that you follow? Um, I think the one piece kind of advice I would give people who are trying some, to kind of some kind make, of do and don'ts, yeah. I think the, the advice I would give uh, is is and I think is where most people go wrong is consistency. Because some people expect to post every day for a week, gain a hundred thousand followers, and then they're going to keep doing it. But what they don't appreciate is that if you post every day for a week, you then have to keep posting every day for every week, or else it's, or else you're just not going to grow. So I feel like people are going bursts of being very active and then not very active, then very active and not very active. That doesn't work. You'd much rather don't post every day. Post. Kind of every three on my Instagram, I post kind of around about once a week, maybe twice a week. But I always have stories up of some kind, so I always just have something going on. Like keep my Instagram consistent, and I find that that's kind of the one best piece of advice I would give would be that kind of consistency, because people kind of expect to grow off of a week of being consistent, but actually you need months, years of being consistent to really be able to grow. So that's my one piece of advice. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, my question to Amit is, uh, Amit, uh, that uh, how how are you? What kind of kids do you engage in, and how have you seen them progress through your platform? Sure. So uh, you know the age group that we are targeting are actually higher secondary schools. Uh, 
school students so classes 11th 12th onwards yeah. are our main uh, you know students wherein we have been able to instill the skills and then they have been also able to utilize it in the best possible way because they are at that age that they are moving from uh, school to higher education uh majorly from tier 2 cities is where we have seen a lot of uh, you know uh, success coming in because uh, you know there is of course as we are developing as a nation in terms of a progressive education society there is still a lot of gap in terms of uh, you know the dearth of skilled teachers as well in uh, in tier 2 cities and that's the need that we are trying to address that the skill is available you beat for tier tier 1 cities or tier 2 or tier 3 uh, what we need is a right mindset of the of the child if the child is progressive the child is serious about a career growth then our trainers are there to help them and hand hold them and taking them to that level that they're looking at and honestly speaking i think the the kind of confidence that i've seen i've come across from the students from tier 2 uh, towns i think uh, it's it's uh, it's really really commendable uh and uh, the kind of i in fact we have gone ahead and hired a few of them as interns as well on our platform and they have become our student ambassadors and the whole culture of uh, you know the vocational training courses coming in the in the upfront started when of course with uh, the government's initiative on the, the changes in the new education policy where a lot of uh, schools are now going ahead and implementing the new education policy guidelines with when it comes to the vocational and skill development uh, courses and we uh, go ahead and we when we connect with the school administrators we say that we are enablers in terms of implementing this further uh, of course there are uh, a lot of schools who who make their own uh, departments uh, vocational skill departments but there are a lot of them who because of the dearth of right education uh, pro- providers you know they are not able to do that that's where we come in the picture and then we do you know enable them to implement it in the right way the main objective being the common ground Uh, of reaching out the right uh, you know students who need the right skills yeah. thank you so much sir yeah yeah what's up please thank you uh, thank you uh, mr amit i just wanted to ask you my the school that i am heading right now is a small school in a very small place chatterpur uh, madhya pradesh we don't have a big number in the senior classes number of students so can we reach out for maybe 10 15 students also if we have uh, them in the cluster can we reach out to you absolutely ma'am in fact you know one of the key features that we have is a live interactive master class we don't have recorded sessions we are utilizing the potential of the learners in that sense uh, to engage them with many activities and we have when we have live interactive master classes it is actually even better if we can make small small groups so that we can give one on one attention to the students and that's how you know when we engage them with activities they they give the results also accordingly you know that's what motivates the trainer also to go ahead and develop the right content keep improving the content what is in the need of the art what is the industry requirement accordingly you know the 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 teacher also values that thank you i think so we'll reach out to you from our school i would like you shared our details and uh, we would love to you know engage further yeah the link is there i think that's there thank you so much for it and uh, just the last question i think if there's no one else i'll ask the last question to har simran if you are ready are you there yeah she's there thank you so in this wonderful book of yours i'm perfectly imperfect You write love is one of the most beautiful things that ever happened to us. Love can make us do anything. From where did you get this inspiration? Well, I think that it's about it's about observing you know what's what's not in there. I don't know if it makes sense or not, but I think that I've always been a keen observer of things. and especially when you're um, reading stuff which kind of ignites your brain and and fills it with inspiration i think that's what my writing uh, generally comes from and um in the book it's, uh you mentioned i'm imperfect i i i i decided to make it a fantasy book just because i wanted to be in that world you know 
And I think that that's the power of words and that's the power of literature that you if you are a story weaver then you can make them in particular ways and if you are a reader then you can interpret it in particular ways. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. That's I think Nandita wants to say something. Nandita you're mute. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, this yeah, is a fan, but a question for Jenks. Actually, um, in the line of what Madam Singh said, uh, do you feel with the involvement of Gadget uh, and the adolescent, do you feel somewhere down the line, uh, imagination and creativity, the way we knew it, is actually dying out? Because when we talk about even creativity or imagination, we quickly looking into Google uh, to get us those ideas. We have to think it out of the air. But now you yeah. have to think it out of the air. It's there. So you just get ideas from there and you create something. So it's not really creativity to that extent. I feel, I don't know. So, uh, you know, because the entire adolescent group, especially with the pandemic, is completely and absolutely attached with the gadget and detached from the family. So a very personal observation. So I feel, you know, with the with Instagram or Snapchat or all the things that you were talking about, does it actually take away the right imagination and the right creativity? What what is your say on this? Um, I feel like, and this is not just in the future, but this is an issue that's been happening for years and will continue to happen, in my opinion. I feel like one of the issues with kind of one of our general societies is that creativity and imagination only works in in very in a very small proportion of jobs so in jobs like being a surgeon there's no creativity in being in a, in a doctor or a surgeon or being a librarian or being a uh, an engineer or a plumber or an electrician there's very there's no creativity needed you're told how things work and you apply those knowledge you apply that knowledge and then that's kind of how you get about your job and I feel like that one of our issues is that there is not enough creative jobs, such as uh, be becoming a music producer, becoming an actor, becoming a singer, songwriter, becoming becoming an artist, becoming an author. However, I think the good news is that th there is a good side to this: is that with AI and automation coming in, kind of 800 million jobs are going to be replaced by AI and automation by 2030. The good news is that the creative jobs are never going to get replaced because there's no AI that you can teach to make music or there's no AI you can teach to write a book or paint a painting. But you can very easily teach AI or a robot to fix a fuse or to kind of re rewire a shower, for example. So I feel like the bad news is that there isn't enough of the creativity. But the good news is that soon we're only going to have creative people because in the far future, and hopefully in my lifetime, your lifetime, we will have kind of the that will be the only things left that people can can do that robots can't. Right. Thank I you. Hope so that answers your question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Just wanted to know your view, actually. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Of course. So that's really wonderful. If there's anyone else who would like to ask a question, I'll give you the opportunity. And uh, I'd like to inform you that uh, you'd asked about, I think, uh, where, where to get those books of Harsimran. They are available on Amazon and other platforms too. And um, and uh, Jenk's website is there. He's, I mean, he, you can just Google him. He's out there. And smart class, you've already got it over there. So I think all our three esteemed speakers, uh, uh, the information is right there for you, and you can easily get it. Yeah. And so thank you. Yeah. Name Harsimran. Do you have any other permission in name Harsimran? Can you repeat the question, please? You were not on to Sorry, I said, do you have the same name? by her similar is that the thing to get the book yes she well, has the same yeah my first two books they are uh, written under the pseudonym of her called man 
and you can google me as Hasiman Korman and you will get the links uh, to my books so thank you very much uh, I would like to really thank our fellow esteemed speakers Jen uh, Jenk Oz, Harsimran Kaur and Amit Full for giving us an enlightening and wonderful session. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, takeaways that we're taking over here and we look forward to seeing you all tomorrow at 5 p.m. with another set of our guests. Till then have a wonderful evening all of you. This is Charles Clarence signing off from the third day session of Young Master of Young Minds, a masterclass with Young Change Makers powered by the Masterclass. God bless us all and have a wonderful night. Good night. God bless us all. Thank, Thank you once again to all the esteemed speakers and all our audiences for being so wonderful and interactive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening. Namaste. Good evening. Namaste.